Wilkins School in North Devon is a village primary with 156 pupils and, as music specialist Maggie Foster teaches every one of them. As all primary teachers will be very well aware, we cannot be experts in every area. I'm the music teacher here at Wilkins School. I find myself teaching geography to a class of Year 5 and Year 6 children. She teaches them geography once a week. This term's topic is rivers. I'm starting at a road junction, which has got Walkham Farm on the right, where Sean lives. I'm starting Before right dipping her toe in the water, Maggie has read up and planned carefully, for the topic is as new to her as it is to Class 5. There are a number of rivers in North Devon that I could have chosen to study, but I decided to work on the water source that's right out on our doorstep, starting on the beach, looking at the stream on the beach and tracing it back to its source. Maggie has planned two days of geography fieldwork, practical activities and map reading that can be applied to any river or stream. We're going to be measuring depths, we're going to be measuring widths of the stream. With the whole class out of school, Maggie is supported by classroom assistant Sue Todd and class teacher Jill Lewis. Maggie and I share the, the teaching of the class. Maggie, in actual fact, um, teaches geography to this class because I only work four days a week. But we share the planning together so that I can use any opportunities in literacy or in numeracy um, to support the work that she's doing in geography in the class. OK, I think Miss Foster's going to go upstream now. <laughs> what I hope the children will get out of this experience is a raised awareness of the environment they live in, an increased confidence with doing practical field studies, an awareness of what it is like to be a part of a group and part of a team. Learning outcomes that can be achieved in any local environment. Best type of learning goes on when they've experienced it themselves. Nine centimetres at the deepest point and five centimetres at the shallowest point. So I want them to feel they really know something about their local area, they're enthusiastic about what they've learned and they'll be talking about it afterwards. Who's identified on their maps where this water is coming from here? Because we all heard it at the gateway, the stream here, there's the Royal Hotel. The riding stables are there. Time's very precious in the classroom, it's, it's busy. I mean, a lot of the time today we were looking at the stream and the water and talking about it and referring to the maps, but actually for some of the time I was walking with different children and they were telling me all sorts of things. Over here at one point we were looking over the fence and I said we can't climb over here, it's too overgrown with the nettles, but then three boys piped up, that's our private den, that's our secret den, we all come down here and hide in here and that's our den over there. You learn a lot more about the children when you give them the time to actually talk with them. Yes. Yes. Let's have a look. Further up the valley, the stream splits and Maggie takes a small group to investigate this tributary. Max, have you got the map? Because I want to identify exactly where we've come from and where this water is now. Is that okay. stream, that one that goes down there? This, this is this stream, Sean. Look, this is this stream. Coming down here. I've been there, I remember. Oh, what it is, is you go down there and there's a load of trees there. Yeah. And then you go, me and my friend went inside the trees and there's a... Big, it, it runs all through these trees. Does it go under the? Um, Let's go. go on, does it go you? under the road? Must do. Must do. What do you think? Let's have a look. There's been some fantastic moments in just one day, whereby you see the children suddenly understand something better than they did before. Sean. Tell us if you wouldn't mind. And there's a stream running down and I noticed it was the same one because 
on the map and I, I know where the um, where it starts at the top of it, so I'm going to take some pictures of it. That's the fantastic thing about learning and actually going out and seeing what you're learning, actually experiencing it. It worked for Sean today. He now knows exactly where that water starts from near to where he lives and where its journey is going. I think it's been fantastic fun. The children have been so enthused by it. But I've loved listening to them talking with each other, the discussions that they've had with each other. And children that wouldn't normally stay on task for such a long time have been really motivated looking at their maps and actually jotting out their observations and everything. So I know it's been really interesting. It's been good for me as well, not being a geography specialist. It's been good to be thrown into a project like this and really get stuck into it and learn with the children, which is good. Day two. And Maggie divides the class into three teams. And we're going to actually basically look at the hills that we've got in the distance. The beach really team's task is an erosion experiment. See if you can find where the water might be cutting through. You're going to create, out of sand, some hilly banks. Then we're going to try pouring water over your sets of hills in a very similar way to how a stream starts as its source comes down through the valley, finally ends up in the sea. And then we'll see what happens. It starts the edges of the other one, so it runs down here. Oh, it's filming. Is it like the little part? No, and we're going to do it here, and then we're going to oh, do yeah, one here. Oh, yeah, Potter's Hill. Then that big one's got to be in front of it. Two and a half kilometres from the beach, the Woolacombe stream splits into two and each tributary is to be investigated by a dedicated team. Morning team two. Your class today is to find the eastern source of the stream. Study your map carefully and plan the route. You will need to take photographs of the source and its surrounding area and be prepared to discuss your findings with the rest of the class. Go carefully, folks. Okay. Wait, no, it's not. It looks like there could be like a little turn off just going... Well, look, there's a, if you look down. here... Look here, what, what, what have we got here? Mud. The ground here is really, really wet, isn't it? All through, through this bit and it lies in puddles in, in certain places, but most, some of it gets down into the, the bottom of the valley to form the stream. Let's have a look. Let's go get that, see if we can get further down towards it. Careful. The stream runs quite close to the road. To the road. road. Where's the road? There. Team three's task is to find the northern source of the stream. It must be here somewhere. Can anyone see it? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Ah, oh, right, there it is. Good. Well done. Now, which direction are we going to follow it in? Uphill. That this way. way. That way. So let's see if we can follow it up this way then. What is this hill? Hill. Is that kind of big one with the little bump on it? And then, oh, this is Potter's Hill. Yeah, so one. this is Potter's Hill yeah. here. This one. So, that one. Yeah. And this one's Black Cloud Hill over there. No, no, over there. Isn't it? Is it? Yeah, so. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah we're from school. I need to get my hills right. Oh, quickly, it's been recorded before it dies. There, there, there. Oh, wow. See what happens. What's the watering can supposed to be giving the effect of? Rain. 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 OK, so the rain's coming down as the hill. What's happening? What can you see? It's making streams. What did Ailey say about the fact it that it went round, went round, went round the bump? Why yeah. would it go round the bump? Because, because it's the easiest it route. It takes the easiest the route. route. Not such an easy route for Team 2, as they follow their muddy path down into the valley. Do you want to step in and see if you can find out how deep it is? Not very, is it? No. no. Probably, about, probably about three centimetres. Three centimetres. centimetres. How many? Two, three centimetres. Yeah, I, would, I was going to say about an inch, which is about two or three centimetres, isn't it? Winston, I can't see your handsome features. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. Right, now, now I'm having camera difficulties. Under the bridge, right? Following their tributary uphill, Team 3 discover a lake. 
So do we think the lake is the source? Let's yeah. just make yeah. sure there's no water running into the lake. If there's no water running into the lake, and we know this lake is the source. Let's go around the lake and see if we can find. Can hear it over there. Oh, there's another lake. Having simulated a rain shower, Team One are now going for more precision. Pour it from one point, see what happens. It's so straight. It's the source it. What's that created? It's created, it's created a um, river line. Straight sort of like a valley. A valley. Or... Just like we've got here, the stream <laughs> cutting away through the, through, down through the hills, coming out through the bridge, slowing down, losing energy as it approaches the sea. Anyone ruining shoes? <laughs> oh, that's all right then. They're a game lot. Back in the valley of the eastern tributary, the intrepid explorers of Team Two are closing in on the source. Deeper. It's quite deeper. You okay? It's slippery. You can't go much further than that. That's as far as we go. Yeah. Journey's end for Team 2. Team 3 have a spring in their step. Right, ooh, what do you notice here about the ground? It's quite soft. It's soft, it's quite boggy, isn't boggy, it? Yeah. Right, so, go and check around the corner of this building and make sure there's no water around there. Can you hear water flowing anywhere? <laughs> no. No? OK, so possibly then we think that, that we've found the source. Brilliant. OK, so if that's the source, where do you think the water's coming from? Under the ground. And probably from under the ground. It's not bubbling up here, it's quite still, yeah. isn't it? But certainly it would appear that the water here is seeping up from under the ground. Yeah. So we found the source, the northern source of the stream. Brilliant. Well done, children. We had a challenge to um, find the northern source of the stream and then we came to a lake where people were fishing and there was, it joined up to um, another lake and then it went into a stream again and we measured it, found the source and it was all like pollution and rubbish in it and everything. Okay, what did you decide about the source? Where was the water coming from? Under the ground. Like either a spring or an aquifer, yeah. you think? Well done. That was really interesting because, of course, the rest of us haven't seen this activity at all. So it's really interesting, and you explained it beautifully as to what you had to do. Fantastic. Did you enjoy the activity? Yeah. Yeah. You had to be like kind of like explorers, didn't you? Following sort of a challenge to get Mrs. Lewis to the right place. I think everybody's been able to learn something very, very special today, and to be able to come back this afternoon and feed back with each other, it means that we've all had a taster of what everybody else has learned. So give that group a clap. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic introduction to our evaluation. Well done. If teachers were considering at any point doing some field work in this way, I would definitely say go for it. The rocks it's filled with health and safety aspects. Teachers can be put off. They've got a lot to do in their school day. There's risk assessments to fill in as soon as you step out of the door. There's all sorts of extra issues to think about, but it's the best learning for the children. It is definitely the way they learn best of all. Let the